we're going to begin today with a message from Dr. Robert DuPont, who is a leader in the drug abuse and prevention treatment. He is one of our board members, and he is coming in through video, and he's going to give some brief remarks, and then I'm going to introduce our very distinguished guests that have joined us this morning. I am super proud and super happy to be with you today. I appreciate this opportunity because of my incredible support, enthusiasm, and appreciation for Oxford House. But before I get deeper into this, let me just say a little bit about my background. So where I'm coming from, you get some idea of that. Uh, I am a, a medical doctor uh, and a psychiatrist. And I have made my entire career for 53 years uh, dealing with the problem of addiction uh, in all kinds of levels. Uh, in that time, I was the uh, first director of the National Institute on Drug Abuse, uh, the second White House drug czar. I think I'm the only person who's known all the White House drug czars, all the heads of DEA and all the heads of NIDA. Uh, and uh, I also am the proudest of being on the board of directors of, uh, of, of Oxford House. I was a pioneer in the use of medication-assisted treatment with methadone. So that's my background. Uh, and uh, all this time, I've always had my own patients as a psychiatrist. And I have to say that I've learned more from my patients than I have from any books or anything else. I think that uh, uh, the uh, experience of working with people with addiction has been uh, the most important thing for me. Okay. We're dealing with a modern drug epidemic that's been around about 60 years, and it's had disastrous consequences. Uh, the leading cause of overdose death uh, in the country, uh, the leading cause of death for people under the age of 50 in the country is overdose deaths. Uh, drugs caused uh, the life expectancy of America to drop three years in a row for the first time uh, in 100 years. Uh, but the question, uh, the, the, to me, the most important thing that's happened in my 53 years is the emergence of a 23 million strong recovery community. Uh, this is the game changer uh, for what's happening with this epidemic. Uh, and, and it changes everything because of the experience of the people who are in recovery. How did they get there? What was their life like when they were using? What happened to get them to want to change? What's their life like now? Those stories are uh, uh, inspirational and they're also educational. And that's what I wanna talk with you about uh, today. Now, some years ago, I got very interested in how good outcomes could be from treatment because relapse is so common, it's defined as part of the disease. Uh, and I had in my practice some doctors who were uh, in recovery with a program called the Physician's Health Programs, uh, which is a, our state programs for physicians with addiction problems. And they really do make recovery the expected outcome. 90% of the people who uh, get into those programs go into recovery and long-term recovery. Uh, and I was very interested in, in how they do that. What do they do to get those doctors to, 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 to do this? And it had to do with a very uh, strict program they have with random testing uh, for that period of time. Uh, but the question comes up of what happens to them after they're finished with their, with their five years of uh, uh, recovery management and they go out on their own. And so I was a uh, principal investigator in a study to look at what happened at the end. And we asked these people, what was the, the doctors, what was the thing that made the biggest impression, the po most positive impression for you? What helped you the most of all the things that happened to you in that five years that you were in the PHP? And these doctors were unequivocal about that. The number one thing that had made a difference to them was the 12-step programs, A and NA. That's very striking. They had a lot of treatment. Uh, in this, uh, and there was twice as they, twice as many picked the 12 steps as treatment as the most important thing that they, happened to them. Okay, so that's the way of background. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about this Oxford House uh, miracle uh, that you all are part of, and I'm so proud to be part of with you. Uh, the, Paul Malloy uh, was in a halfway house, and it lost its funding, and he had to do something else. And so what did he do being the guy he is? He started his own halfway house with the people who were there with him. 
Uh, and that experience was the beginning of Oxford House 45 years ago. I am really struck by the fact uh, that that this is an example of an innovation in dealing with this modern drug epidemic that came from uh, somebody who was uh, addicted to drugs uh, and took control himself of, of, of building something. And it wasn't just for himself and his other five or six people who went into that halfway house. He created a miracle uh, that has changed the lives of tens of thousands of people uh, in the United States over that 45 year period. And, and that miracle is, is what I'm celebrating today and letting you know how important uh, I think it is. Now, one of the things about this, what, what uh, Paul Moy has done and what Oxford House do, does, in the, in the larger context of, of drugs and what we do with treatment and, and in general, uh, is have a very clear commitment to recovery. Uh, it's unequivocal. Uh, and so much of things that are going on in treatment now are a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And it's not quite sure what we're doing and where we're going, but we're gonna be helping people, but that's it. Uh, and it's often called harm reduction. And the goal is to have people you know, stay alive while they're using. And the goal is to uh, have them use a little less. Maybe they could control their drinking and drug use and things like that. And, and this program has a very different view. And that is the goal is no use. It is sobriety. That is the goal. And it's not one drug. It's not an opioid issue. It's not an alcohol issue. It's any drug because they're all the same thing of stimulating brain reward and the addiction is the same and it's all poly drug now. So all these things that are specific to a drug uh, is not, not relevant because there's nobody taking just one drug anymore, virtually nobody. But here you have clarity you have an absolute clarity about no use. And if you use, you're out of the house. Now that is very unmodern. Uh, that, that is an unusual thing to do. And a lot of people would think that was harsh or cruel or uh, unreasonable, but it absolutely is central to the success of Oxford houses. And, and the brilliance of this Oxford house uh, approach comes out of the experience of people in recovery. And you know how do those you know how those physicians health programs got started and have the same zero tolerance approach for physicians? It was because it was doctors in recovery who started the program. They were much tougher than other people would be on expectation of that. And that ability to have that clarity of focus uh, is what gives those that program and this program uh, much of what it what it, it delivers in terms of outcome for, for people in an absolutely wonderful way. Uh, it's also very interesting to me uh, that, that who pays for Oxford House? Where does the money come from for this? Well, most things in, in, in are, are dependent on some uh, insurance company, there are uh, some uh, government agency, something like that, and you're beholden to those people. But this is different. Uh, this is paid for by the people themselves. Uh, that you all pay for this uh, and support it yourselves. And in the process, learn about management and getting along with people and all kinds of things are benefited from this approach. But again, it is so completely different uh, because it relies on the people with the problem uh, to be able to make it happen. Uh, and it has that clarity of vision. And I think this is really important. It also is very striking to me that, that addiction is a teacher. It teaches the individual who has the addiction. It teaches the family. Uh, it teaches the community. It teaches doctors like me uh, to, to, to work with people who have the problem with addiction. And that is really important to understand where that, where that wisdom comes from, where the, where the idea comes from. The, the reality is that Oxford House is, is unique uh, it's leading the whole country. Uh, it's, a, it's a modern miracle, is the way I think about it. 49 states, 
3,000 houses, 25,000 beds. Uh, it's, it's changing the, the, the whole country and the way people think about uh, addiction. And, and, and it, it's full of hope. Uh, it's full of inspiration uh, that comes out of this. Uh, Paul Malloy didn't just have an idea 45 years ago. Uh, he made it happen. And he does it to this day. He is tenacious. Uh, in building uh, Oxford House. Uh, it's personal to him. Every single house, every single person in those houses is personal to him. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, and where does that come from? That comes from the zeal of recovery, the, the desire of people who have suffered with addiction to help other people become free of that suffering. That's the 12th step. And, and that's the key idea of, of what's going on with Oxford House. And it's what's so very different from what goes on in all kinds of other places. So when people talk about evidence-based, they'll use that word evidence-based. And what they're talking about usually is some kind of crazy 12-week study where you people did what, this with one of them and you do something else with the other of them. And, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but 12 weeks doesn't make any difference in this disease. I mean, that's a nothing kind of thing. The issue is, where does it go? Uh, what, what happens at the end of it? Uh, and that's where this focus on recovery and sustaining it and building around the recovery community so that everybody in Oxford House is in an active recovery process with a community of other people. I don't know of any other disease like that. Uh, I don't know anything that's got that kind of power to it and kind of depth to it. Uh, one of the things that, that's interesting to me about this is the only disease where uh, when you get well, you don't aspire to go back to where you were before because recovery is so much better than where you were before. Uh, the person in recovery is a different person, not only from the person when he was using, but the person before he was using uh, and that's because of the education that comes from the uh, wrestling uh, with this existential monster of addiction uh, and the hijacked brain that is part of it. And, and, and that wrestling that, do, that is done together. It's not done just alone. It's done as a, in a community of recovery. Uh, and that is uh, the future for our country. Uh, you are the leaders in that. And, and I salute you for what you're doing. I want to do whatever I can uh, to help you with this. And when I say addiction is a teacher, I also want to emphasize that it's a, not, not a nice teacher. Uh, it's a cruel teacher. It's a tough teacher. It's an unforgiving teacher uh, in there. And, and that makes it different from a lot of other things. But it makes, it makes the recovery all the more precious. So at this celebration, of this incredible revolution that you are part of. First of all, I want to again, over and over again, say that in all my years in this field, I don't know anybody else who's done what Paul Malloy has done. So I salute Paul Malloy and what he's done in a very personal level. And to this day, uh, he's my hero. Uh, and I look at the whole uh, drug uh, situation and problem in the country. Uh, and I also encourage you to speak up to other people that you know in your family and elsewhere about what you've learned in this to help them understand because you are their teacher. Just like my patients were my teachers. It took, I was in this field 20 years before I understood AA and NA or how important they were. Uh, you you got to help the doctors out. You got to help all, all kinds of people out to understand what it is. Uh, and, and you do it with that story what your life was like when you were using, what got, what got you to think about stopping, and what your life is like now. That what got you to stop is a really big deal because a lot of people want to re remove the, the thing that gets people to stop. They want to soften the blow. The blow is really important to got, get somebody to make that, uh, make that decision to change the direction of his life. So in finale, thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you're doing. And please continue to lead this country as we deal with this incredible, painful, cruel epidemic that is changing our world. And you are the teachers and the leaders. And I am saluting every single one of you. Thank you.